It's, it's about the totality of the evidence. That's what the science is. It's the collective experience of everybody, not just you and not just me, which are one and N equals one. Anecdote is unreliable because of uh, each person has at least 12 different cognitive biases that could con and infinite confounding factors that could be determining why they feel better or what their personal belief that why they think this thing may or may not be good or bad for them is because the personal opinion is usually entirely uninformed, inaccurate, misguided, um, they've, uh, people have all sorts of uh, hidden agendas and hidden motives, such as lying to people for money, nefarious purposes, on and on and on. And you see it almost every time someone who's actually informed has a conversation with one of these influencers. Like, they're not being 100% accurate, objective, or even honest in a lot of cases. Misalignment, Elise Parker, just uploaded a video, I tried the carnivore diet for 30 days, ex-vegan. Her video has even been covered by mainstream media like Fox News. So today we are going to talk about this dangerous and as you will see, unlawful video that she posted. So in case it wasn't obvious to some of you, which is understandable, I want to point out the fact that Elise is just a paid actress in a commercial brought to you by this unethical company, ButcherBox, a company whose CEO has made $30 million in just two years furthering disease in humans, animal exploitation, and the destruction of the environment. A company that has an abysmal reputation and alarming reviews on Yelp, which we will get to later. In one year, the company paid out over a million dollars in commission to affiliates like Elise. This is her affiliate link and page, which is linked from the description of her video. So how much is this carnivore being paid? Well, after being on YouTube for over a decade, I estimate she is being paid $20,000 or more for starring in this commercial. Recently, the FTC released updated guidelines outlining rules around paid sponsorships. And as we know, Elise doesn't research anything. I've never, ever, ever been the person to research and research and research before doing something. Ah, uh, yes, we remember. I spent the next four years reading as many scientific articles as I could get my hands on to try and figure out the underlying cause of my mysterious illnesses. I've read thousands of papers. They eventually led me to the conclusion that gluten could be irritating my gut, and maybe that was causing an immune response. So this is another lie. Michaela's claiming that she has spent countless hours, she has read thousands of scientific papers on diet, health, autoimmune function, and based on reading all of the scientific research, she has come to the conclusion that her carnivore diet or her lion diet is ideal for treating at least her specific autoimmune issues. Well, that is not true. She does not read any scientific research pretty much at all, and she admitted this to me in an email. So I emailed her asking if she would be interested in debating uh, what diet is best for human health, a vegan or carnivore diet. She responded, I'm not sure. I don't know if it would be helpful. I'm not interested in debating the science, quote unquote, behind either diet, although Paul Saladino might be. The medical community failed me, so I don't care what scientific papers say. So I don't know what we would talk about. What are you thinking? So what a stark contrast. On YouTube, publicly, you have no shame in stating, oh man, I've spent countless hours researching, I've read thousands of scientific papers, I have this huge wealth of knowledge on nutrition and autoimmune disease, but then privately, when, when the public can't see, when someone challenges you to a debate, challenges you to support your claims with evidence, you say, Say, oh, I, I'm scientifically illiterate. I don't know too much about science. I don't even trust science. You see, science failed me, so I try to avoid science. Uh, so I'm not really interested in debating this topic because I don't know what I'm talking about. And you see it almost every time someone who's actually informed has a conversation with one of these influencers. Like, they're not being 100% accurate, objective, or even honest in a lot of cases. And I just want to take this moment to highlight just how important this conversation and discussion is because literally every time, I, pretty much almost every single day I log on to, onto my Facebook pages or my Facebook groups and <clears throat> 
anytime you see any type of discussion being generated by anti-vegans, low-carbers, carnivore dieters, paleo, what have you, any type of meathead type person or anti-vegan type person, you will constantly, this is the how the discussion will always roll out, is anytime you challenge them or press them for any type of evidence whatsoever, 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 whether it's, you know, any type of evidence, any type of cited reference, any type of reference whatsoever, whatsoever, they will simply just come out and with the conspiracy that, oh, well, no, all science is actually all corrupt, all science is fake, all science is fraud, all science is funded by, by the government conspiracy. They think that PubMed peer-reviewed literature is published and archived on government database websites just to archive these studies, automatically attribute that as they think that the government has automatically funded all studies that have ever existed and they think that the government every study is a government funded study and they think it's all just a giant conspiracy and it's all fake and it's all fraud and yet when you challenge them for what what evidence backs up their opinions about health you know they they so how do they know anything is re- is real for certain at all and so that's where oh well oh no i don't i don't i'm done with research i only go off my own experience but thanks for your opinion on your beliefs so they're trying to say that your the actual objective evidence the majority of the evidence they're trying to say that oh that's just your opinion and your belief which is what all they have so they're trying to bring you down trying to bring the highest evidence down to their level of the lowest quality evidence that we have which is personal experience though or personal anecdote they will always say oh oh yeah i don't do i don't actually do any research and as we know elise doesn't research anything i've never ever ever been the person to research and research and research before doing something ah yes we remember she does not read any scientific research pretty much at all, and she admitted this to me in an email. Oh no, I don't, e- I, actually science is all fraud and it's all corrupt. I don't even trust science. And this is their constant, it doesn't matter who you talk to, it doesn't matter who you actually try to get to engage with a public discussion or in a public debate about the actual facts. They will all just come out and say, oh no, this is it, I got in a huge discussion with this with Phil Escott also. So I've got countless examples of these. I could show you screenshot after screenshot, literally every single day on my Facebook page there are tons of these posts and they go viral and everyone is all jumping on the bandwagon and look, I mean... It's okay to be the village idiot, but it's not okay for everyone to rally around the village idiot for health advice. I mean, it's okay. I mean, the village idiot can be a a great loving person, but we don't go to the village idiot and all rally and gather around them and asking them for, you know, holistic nutritional health advice. It's absolutely insane. And so this is what they always do. They always reject any type of evidence, reference, citations whatsoever because they don't have any. Instead, all they do is say, oh, the science isn't my thing. I don't do research. I just go off my own personal experience, though. I've never, ever, ever been the person to research and research and research before doing something. Ah, yes, we remember. And the problem is they they have no evidence to inform that their personal experience is even competent whatsoever. Whatsoever. And so what they do instead is they tell you, oh no, I don't ha- I don't like science, but you go go and debate Paul Saladino instead. And the problem with that is when you actually try to debate Paul Saladino and Chris Masterjohn, they don't have any science whatsoever either. All they have is their own personal podcasts. And every time I'm trying to get people to show actual references, anything to back up their claims, they send me a Paul Saladino podcast. And in that Paul Saladino podcast with Chris Masterjohn, there are no zero cited references for anything that they claim whatsoever. It's all just their opinion. And Chris Masterjohn thinks he can get away with this because he's some kind of nutritional... PhD 
PhD outlier who's got all the answers, whereas the entire field of people who are actually publishing and reviewing the literature, oh no, they don't know, but Chris Masterjohn, who had to quit and instead became like some some goofball online, like, oh no, he knows, and, and yet he doesn't cite any references whatsoever. So the problem is they're referring to, they're appealing to authority with Chris Masterjohn and the low carb bosses, Paul Saladino, and they don't have any actual evidence. I've never, ever, ever been the person to research and research and research before doing something. Ah, uh, yes, we remember. And as a result, she is not complying with these rules. That's right. The FTC is going after US influencers in a big way. These laws are in place to protect consumers from people like Elise who use deceptive, misleading marketing techniques to promote dangerous products and services to the public for money. ButcherBox has already been pulled up for deceptive advertising, and now it seems like they're at it again. The Federal Trade Commission is very clear about what is required of influencers and the importance of not misleading or withholding information from viewers. It is not enough to state that you are being sponsored for the video by slipping it into the description box. You need to state within the first 30 seconds or so that the video is sponsored by the company. So today I partnered with Maple Lodge Farms who sponsored this video. And ideally state that you are receiving money from the company. So the goal here is that the viewer is fully aware that they are viewing an ad. Saying this, I've teamed up with ButcherBox to shed some light on how to source high quality meat is not enough. Teaming up with ButcherBox to shed some light on sourcing high quality meat is not disclosing that you're being paid for the ad. And you see it almost every time someone who's actually informed has a conversation with one of these influencers. Like, they're not being 100% accurate, objective, or even honest in a lot of cases. So um, stay tuned for the next part. We'll pick up right here where we left off. It, what You can watch it. I will leave any intros and stuff out so that you can watch it in a consecutive style. And so again, my name is Cullen Smith. This is Lifting the Veil. You can find all of my full books, presentations, videos, films, articles, posts at patreon.com slash lifting the veil. And um, there are, is also a ton of exclusive content and I will leave the cited reference links in the description down below. So you can check that out for all of my full content and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned, make sure to subscribe. Please help me um, reach more people by sharing these videos around on the internet because I rely solely on word of mouth and the recommended algorithms are not recommending any of my videos or films anymore my channel has literally been completely restricted so i rely on your help and i need your help so please help support this channel by sharing my work around if you appreciate it and uh make sure to subscribe if you're not a uh, subscriber already and leave me your comments i definitely want to know what you have to share and what you have to think about all of this stuff and i will see you in the next video y'all stay safe and take care of yourselves and i will see you later